My horse is a horrible dancer. It's like he's got two left feet. Thanks for joining me today in the vet truck. My name is Dr. Matt Witzel with Western Montana Equine. Today we are finishing up our two-part series on wound management in horses. As you're watching this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and feel free to leave questions or suggested video topics in the comment section. Okay, so now the vet is gone, your horse is sewed up, you wanna know what to do next. So whether or not your horse's wound needs a bandage placed over it, there's a decent chance that you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of an ointment applied to the wound. One of the most common options for an antibiotic ointment is triple antibiotic ointment, or Neosporin. This does a really great job at preventing surface infections, but just keep in mind that it, if there's a deeper infection into a wound or if the wound has been sutured shut, it's not gonna do that much good. But for anything superficial, it's a great choice. One of my favorite antibacterial wound ointments is silver sulfadiazine cream. This ointment has been shown to decrease the healing time or increase healing in wounds. Another ointment that I use quite frequently in wounds is a steroid antibiotic ointment. This is produced as Quadratop, Animax, Panalog. There's a bunch of different versions of it, but essentially it's a little bit of steroid and some antibiotic cream. This really shines when you're dealing with wounds that might be developing proud flesh. The last ointment I want to touch on is nitrofurosone. This stuff has been around for a very long time and I know a lot of people are big fans of it. I don't tend to use it very often on wounds because it has been shown to actually increase the healing time or slow down healing and I don't typically want that. So when it comes to bandaging, the point of a bandage is to increase pressure, control bleeding, provide extra support, and provide a barrier against contamination or infection. Typically, against the skin or the wound, you're going to have some sort of a dressing material. Telfa pads or non-adhesive pads are very popular, but what I don't like about them is they tend to hold moisture against the wound, and that can delay healing to some extent. What I usually prefer are what's called hydrophilic foam dressings, and these are sponge-like pads that you can put on there and they absorb a lot of that moisture, keeping the wound dry enough to allow healing and help to prevent proud flesh from occurring. Next up, you just need something to keep it in place, and I use what's called specialty cast padding. It's a cotton-type material that tears very easily. It's important that this layer tear if needed because if your bandage gets displaced and starts moving around on the leg, you do not want anything that could tighten up and cause a pressure sore or even worse, a bowed tendon. Once you get your foam dressing stabilized with the cast padding, I like to use BB satin and it's a synthetic, again, cotton type material, but it provides some padding that's incredibly important, again, to prevent some pressure sores or bowed tendons. Don't use roll cotton. Roll cotton is organic cotton that if you use it on a wound, it tends to hold way too much moisture in and most of the time you'll end up with some proud flesh. Its intended use is for cleaning purposes, not for bandaging purposes. Then I provide my first compressive layer with brown gauze. Now, brown gauze can be difficult to deal with. One thing that you really want to try and focus on is applying it smooth and a keeping even pressure the entire time. Don't be afraid of putting a fair amount of tension on there, but the main thing is that the tension should be even all the way through. You do not want wrinkles, you don't want it bunched up, and you definitely don't want any type of compressive layer to be touching the skin. If it does, you're asking for a pressure sore. After brown gauze, I apply my outer compressive layer, which is just vet wrap. Most of you guys are pretty familiar with that. I tend to apply enough pressure with this to take out all of the wrinkles. Now, as your horse's wound is trying to heal, moisture plays a big role. 
Too little moisture can cause excessive scarring and poor hair regrowth. Too much moisture can cause exuberant granulation tissue or proud flesh. So for those of you that are not familiar with or don't know what proud flesh is, when you have a wound and there's a gaping hole or there's a void in the tissue that needs to be filled, the body produces granulation tissue as a filler. Ideally, the granulation tissue fills in and the skin edges close over on top of it and voila, you have a healed wound. Occasionally, the granulation tissue gets a little bit over eager and becomes exuberant granulation tissue or proud flesh. This is where it grows past the skin edges and the skin can no longer close over on top of it. If proud flesh is left untreated, it can push back the skin edges and make the wound twice the size of the original. If this happens, it has to be surgically trimmed and this obviously needs to be done by a vet. As wounds are healing, they're gonna need to be cleaned and treated on a regular basis. I like to use the solutions that I described earlier, the beta dinochlor hexidine solutions to clean them periodically with. You wanna get all that debris out of there. You wanna make sure that they're clean, provide a clean, dry bandage. Again, moisture control is gonna be imperative in producing a nicely healed wound. Now, if the wound that you're dealing with was sutured shut and there's no infection and it dries up within a day or two, then you probably won't have to deal with discharge. But in other cases, if the wound is open or draining, any type of drainage can scald the hair and the skin underneath it. So it's really important that you take your time every day and clean that drainage off the skin and the fur below the wound. A little trick I learned is to smear some Vaseline or bag balm below the wound so that the drainage does not contact the skin and will not cause scalding, as well as it makes it a lot easier to clean it off every day. Until your horse's wound is 100% healed, at any point, it can become infected. So keep an eye out for different signs of infection. Those are going to include swelling, heat, pain, increased drainage, foul smelling drainage. If you do notice signs of infection, there's a decent chance that the antibiotics, if the horse is even on antibiotics, are not doing their job and there needs to be something that changes there. Sometimes this means going from one oral antibiotic to a different oral antibiotic. Sometimes this means going from oral antibiotics to an injectable antibiotic like penicillin or genomycin or Exceed. Either way, keep your veterinarian involved in this process. Let them know if you have any concerns or if a wound is not healing the way that it should be. If everything's going perfect and then all of a sudden there's swelling on the leg, that's a big red flag. Let your vet know. So there you go. That's most of what you need to know about managing wounds on your horse. Obviously, this is not comprehensive, so keep that in mind, but the last thing that I want to talk about is what you can do to prevent wounds from occurring. How can you keep your horse safe? You really have to treat your horse as if their goal when they wake up every morning is to get hurt. So go through their pens, their pastures, their stalls. Make sure that they don't have an excuse to get hurt. Pay attention to your fencing material. Avoid barbed wire fencing at all costs. Make sure that there is no loose wire laying around. If a part of your fence is falling down, get it fixed right away. Those are the areas where a horse might lean against and get cut or get tangled up in. Get those wire cuts around its pastern that you don't want to be dealing with. Bolt heads that might be sticking out of a fence post can be especially dangerous if they're in or around a funnel area like a gateway or a stall door. Also pay attention to your trailer. Your horse might be really comfortable hanging out in its field and not be getting into trouble out there, but get it in a trailer and if the ride's a little bumpier than they might like, they might start bouncing around and be more likely to get hurt in the process. So go through everywhere that your horse is exposed to, make sure that there's nothing sharp or dangerous. 
be conscientious about fences between horses that are housed next to each other. Horses that are a little bit more fractious might like to kick, sometimes through the fence, at another horse, usually around mealtime. Think about that when you're trying to come up with living situations for different horses. Okay, thanks so much for joining me today in the vet truck. That's all that I have on wound management and horses. Hope you enjoyed the two-part series. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And have a great day.